Hi guys and welcome back to the channel here with another Thunder Tier 1 video. This one here today is going to be covering the customization um, and the unlocks. So to start, uh, I'll give you a little bit of background here. So the unlocks for the game are 100% random. You gain everything on average, it seems to be around every two level ups. Um, you do not get a notification when you get a camo unlock unless you go into the camo tree for one part of your gear here and then you'll see a little green dot on the new camo now if you unlock a new piece of headgear or top or trousers then you'll get a little green dot on their little legs marker torso marker or headgear marker now the stuff that is unlockable in the game here are headgears, tops, pants or trousers, camos, patches, and then the armory slash main menu backgrounds. So they are the things that are unlockable by default. Now, when it comes to actually using the items you get, they will simply just appear here when you unlock them. Like I did not start with this MK6 with cover, and then you can just equip it as soon as you unlock it. Same with the camos, you can just equip it there as well. Now that covers it for the basics of the unlocking part of this. Now, onto the bit more nitty gritty side, which is the actual customization itself. Now, when it comes to missions, uh, whether that's single player or multiplayer, you will have a point budget. Now, when you do a single player mission yourself, underneath the single missions tab, or under multiplayer, when you set the mission in any of the modes, you will get a loadout points limit slider here. When you do this, you can set the total number of loadout points you wish to have available to you and your AI or you and your player teammates there. Once that is set, so I've got that set to 40, and you go into your inventory here, you will see on the right side a budget breakdown. Now this budget breakdown will list everything that uses points to build up your loadout. This includes your weapons, your sidearms, your grenades, and your equipment. Now, with these, as you put them on, obviously some weapons will cost different amounts. You can see what they cost in the top right of their box as you go to select them. So here, we're just gonna select the L96A1, costs four points. As you can see in the list here, it's at the top of our budget breakdown, plus four. Now, attachments also cost points towards your budget loadout. So now that suppressor has added another four points onto the L96A1, costing it eight points in total. In the budget breakdown, you can see that here, with the L96 still being four and then the silencer for it, one in step in, plus four as well. This also goes for your sidearms. Pointers do not count towards it, but scopes do also count towards the cost of your weapon. As you can see there. Now this budget that you have is per person. You do not have to worry about sharing these points with people. This is purely your own choice. So as you can see, there is a really fast, unarmored, just kind of trolley pvp loadout here that i have only costing 15 points by default how i have it but i can easily swap out for the different weapons and it doesn't matter i can pretty much fit in to any pvp match regardless of what they set as the points i have a pve loadout that is stupidly heavy saved because it contains a lot of ammunition quite a few grenades, a bunch of med kits and a breaching charge, and it has some of the heaviest armor in the game. As you 
you can see in the breakdown, got everything that totals up to my 40 points of budget used here. So the AK default lead 2, plus 4 for the silencer or suppressor that's on it, and then plus 1 for the little scope that's on it. My P226 sidearm on my hip there, being plus 1 point, and then the silencer or suppressor for it being another 3. I have one frag grenade equipped to my chest here as my main grenade, being plus 4. The cutters attached to my back there, being plus 1, as you can see in the equipment there. Now, I then have another four additional frags, two in my pants, two in my rig, all adding four each. So plus four, plus four, plus four, and plus four. I then have two medkits in my backpack. They both cost three. So you see, plus three, plus three. And then finally, a breaching charge in my backpack as well, plus an extra two. Now, this totals me to my full 40 budget. Now, when you have your loadouts, you can save them under presets by just hitting this manage presets button down here, and you can hit new preset to create a new preset based on what you have. You can also, if you go over your preset, click the pencil to update, the folder to apply, and the trash can to delete. So we're just going to update this one with the rolled trousers now instead. So that's now saved and we can just apply that to the character and you can just quick click between the labels down here to swap between them. Now, we're just going to delete this bottom one. We no longer need it. So we're just going to hit the trash can and there it goes. It's now gone from down there as well. But we still have the stuff equipped to our soldier. So we could add it as a new preset if we wish to label that literally whatever and there you go now with customization as you go through different camos in different environments can change your visibility now this also depends on the time of day that you're in as well so it's not always great running solid camo head to toe so you were running just all DPM on absolutely everything. This might not be good. You might need to change it up a little bit. Have some, I don't know, olive drab on your trousers and your armor. To just, just to, you know, break it up a little bit there. The equipment you select as well here, as you can see, as we swap between the headgears, start when you have no headgear with your parameters as no ballistic properties because you don't have any protection but your mobility and dexterity is set to one now as you change through items and get to bulkier stuff such as helmets and armor these values will change so whilst this headset uh this headgear has a ballistic value of two meaning it can somewhat protect from basic pistol rounds at times so this would be the type th uh, 2 can do a little bit of damage but certain lower caliber weapons as you can see with the buckshot on shotguns it's going to have a really hard time actually dealing much damage to you if it hits you in the back of the head but for getting this little few points of protection, we have lowered our mobility and our dexterity there. This also goes for which body armor you choose. There's different types. Uh, you can obviously have none, and this will still set your mobility and dexterity back to 1.0 for that slot. Or the heavier the armor, basically, the uh, less mobile you are, and the more you're affected. Same goes for your backpacks. And your rigs, although neither of them give protection, and your trousers. As you can see, if you change between trousers and t-shirts, you can be less mobile, more mobile, etc. Now, none of these take up any budget slots, but they do add weight to you as well. 
Your weight adds to your encumbrance down here in the bottom right. Now your encumbrance is the combined weight of everything that you are carrying. It affects your soldier's performance by impacting stamina and fatigue and the noise that you generate when you step. Obviously, the heavier you are, the louder you're going to be. Now, all your gear has a mobility and a dexterity value. Bar your weapons and actual equipment, like your main, your main gear there. Your mobility affects the pace of your actions that require core agility and endurance. This is your movement speed, your stamina and fatigue recovery, and your climbing over obstacle speed. So this is for when you uh, need to move fast, need to regen your stamina because you've, say, sprinted across, I don't know, a massive open field or whatever. Suddenly you're shaking, you can't aim very well because you're uh, fatigued. And how quickly you can climb over small walls or small tables and stuff like that. Now, your dexterity is also affected and your dexterity affects the pace of actions that require upper body strength and agility. This sort of stuff includes switching your weapons and reloading your weapons. Your aiming stability and recovery for your aiming stability. Picking up and dropping items in and out of your backpack and off the floor and your ability to climb ladders at a fast pace. Now you can get these values rather high as we can see here we have quite a high value for this on this loadout everything here if we even remove i mean all, all the hair i have night vision do here is add a little bit of encumbrance to us but as you can see we have a stupidly high mobility and dexterity we can move really fast recover really fast climb ladders and stuff like that fast we can reload at a decent pace swap weapons fairly quickly and all that lovely jazz there whereas on this loadout here meant for slower stealthier pve whilst we technically make more noise when we move and we are a lot slower and a lot bulkier we have a lot more gear for engagements and encounters that come our way so we can always plan or execute a plan b if something doesn't go our way now when you do missions with bots on your team, you have the ability to fully customize them in the same manner that you get customized also, are your actual character's face and voice. So here you can quite literally change everything they are using. As we go through. So you can just give him some wacky loadouts and you can even change the camo of their stuff as well if you really want it just to make them really wild now as you can see clobber doesn't really fit in so what we're gonna do is his, cam his camo is a little off for the group we're just going to get him to we're going to click his name here and we're going to do use my camo this will copy the camos that i have equipped on the parts that i have though it does not seem to have done it on the best there we go Now he looks a little bit more back as if he should be in the squad. But what we can do is go, actually, we'll just swap it back to that booty as well. Now, you might look at Clobber and go, actually, don't quite like Clobber. We're going to change him. So you have different operators here and their default values that you can change between. Different ones for different countries. So we're just going to go through we're going to look at what we want so in our team i think we'll, we'll probably go a little bit aggressive so we're going to bring another assaulter with us so we're going to bring phoenix phoenix has default gear we 
can say hat trick. Right. Unfortunately, your time is done, sir. We're going to bring a support person with us. We're going to bring specs. So there you go. You now have different operators. And you can always go back, change, and be like, actually, hat trick, come back to us, buddy. Same with you, clobber. Get back in here. And they will come back in with their default gear that they have set to them. Now, when you click on an AI name down here, this also goes for players in PvP. You can do copy loadout, copy gear camo, and copy gear. You can do this with anyone in PvP, as long as you're in the lobby. So when you can get bots to use my loadout and it suddenly sets them all big bulky and rah, scary because I've got a big loadout I could then click on rascal and go actually you know what copy loadout we want to look exactly like him and then we could just get hat trick to just also just you know use my gear he'll copy the same body stuff but keep his weapons and we could go actually going to use um i'm going to copy the gear of this one just so we're a bit diverse but i'm going to keep the gun that rascal has and the actual stuff ammo wise and whatnot just to make it you know a little more useful and i'll look backpacks empty we might as well get rid of the backpack make ourselves a little bit more maneuverable or whatever you can go through looking at the stuff like that when you've selected a preset that you use and you edit it, don't worry, it doesn't save unless you go back and save it. So if you go, actually, ah, no, I don't like that. Just click it, load it back. Perfectly fine. You've got everything back the way you want it. This pretty much covers it for the customization. There's not really anything else that needs to be gone over. If you wish to read up about the operators that you have with you in your team, then you can hover over the different stuff here, get their base stats and whatnot when they're in the change operator part. You can see their stats down here as well. Obviously, these are their current stats with gear on. And you can use them as you wish now as for customizing in pvp and copying other people's loadouts it's exactly the same as it was there so we're just going to join a random lobby that has people in so this one here eu realism xfil free And then look, we stroll into the server. Oh no, we're over the budget because the budget for this server, because it's an official server, is 24 points. Now, we can see that Kyle on the left here has all the stuff that he needs. He's not over the budget. So we're just going to copy loadout. And it will give us everything that we can have of his stuff that we have unlocked. Now, because we don't have his headgear unlocked and we don't have his camo unlocked, we can't use any of them. So it will leave us with the face parts that we had originally. It won't give us the extra parts that he has that we do not have unlocked. To unlock them, you'll just have to level up. It comes randomly and that will be it. So we could save this if we want to, but I'm not going to save this loadout. We are just going to remove the stuff off our head though real quick and as you can see there's appearance here body type there is female face a male face a male face b male face c and male face d there is also voice profile there seems to only be one male profile but you can change the pitch however you like within those percentages the background here they're also just unlocked randomly it should give you a different place to view your person really nothing else really to it there this diorama is a part of the pre-order bonus 
pretty cool that you have different ones here. Now, finally, there is these little parts here, kind of extras to your headgear and stuff. So sunglasses supposedly help slightly, like the tiniest bit, against flashbangs. Whether that's true isn't, um, I haven't been able to test properly yet. The gas masks help a little bit against smoke grenades. The bandana. I think it's just the cord. I don't think it has any sort of use against um, smoke grenades either. Got another gas mask there. And then obviously the night vision. Night vision you turn on and off. So you can help see in night time. And you have different headgears here as well. And then you've got elbow pads, gloves, and knee pads. These are all unlocked by default right here, along with all the vests and all the backpacks. And these just, they give little descriptions of what they do when you go to select them. I tend to run full set of all of them, but you can mix and match to find something that works for you. Now, just quickly before we finish up here, you can bring multiple types of grenades and equipment from here and different types of ammo with your weapons. So, simply just to change your attachments, obviously are these little boxes on the side of the weapon there. You can choose what ammo your weapon is loaded with by default by clicking on the little magazine and changing it. And then you can load a mix of ammo by using these little arrow buttons next to the different ammo types on the left. By clicking them, it will just throw a magazine into your inventory each click. And you can just load different ammos. If you wanna know how to swap between the different magazines, you can check out my previous video to do with the controls and the key bindings. Uh, same with smoke grenades or any grenades, sorry. Uh, you can choose your default one here that you have equipped to your vest. You can add more by clicking this little arrow button or you can hover over the inside after you click on it and click the little arrow instead to add the different types to your inventory there. Same goes for equipment. You can choose what you start with on your back and you can add extra to your inventory by clicking the little buttons there. These, obviously, as we covered earlier, do add towards your budget and you can still see your budget breakdown at all times in the customization screen on the right, unless you're doing the free look by holding right mouse button there. Now, I hope this has been of use to some people out there. If there's anything else you need me to cover in regards to customization, drop a comment down below and I'll be sure to cover that sort of stuff. But until then, enjoy and I'll see you in the next one.